Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Christian, for coming to Liverpool tonight. This is the first video blog for the University of Liverpool Islamic Society 2013, and we're thrilled to have you here with us as you talk about your extraordinary journey to Islam. Thank you. Alaikum salam. <laughs> now, without giving too much away about your book, MTV to Mecca, we have a few questions for you tonight before you take the stage. <laughs> there it is right there. I didn't know much about Islam at all, you know, just that it was a strict, antiquated book and uh, not very, you know, relevant to everyday life nowadays. Um, what else? I thought Muslim women are suppressed mm -hmm. and um, perhaps, you know, there's a bit of violence there too. But I, re I you know, shameful that uh, I really knew practically nothing. Well, now that I am a Muslim, you know, my whole um, worldview has changed. Um, I do everything in relation to God, and I have that inner dialogue with God all the time, you know. Before, I felt empty inside. I had the high life, you know, went to all the VIP parties and, and, and interviewed famous people and had red carpet treatment and so on, but there was an emptiness inside. You know, and I had this empty feeling since I was a young person, even in Germany, um, and that is now filled with meaning. It's filled with God, you know, and trying to to serve God in whatever capacity um, I can. So I feel enriched, you know. It's an enormous source of strength, of hope, of peace and contentment, you know. And I find all all so many answers also. In fact, it's a, you know in the Quran, reading the Quran and reading about Islam, you know, it answers all the big questions in life, and so much more. You know, it's a, it's a really a daily guide. I wouldn't know any, and you know, it, it helps you cope also with, with difficulties. I don't know how people do it without faith. You know, um, I wouldn't want to swap it for anything. So. Well, I think first of all, we, we need to remember that wherever we go, whatever we do, we're all ambassadors of Islam as Muslims. And I think one really good way is um, by befriending people, you know, by, by excelling in, in um, what you do, by doing, doing what you're meant to do really well, you know, to, and doing a good job at what, whatever you're doing, and um, trying to be on your best behavior. I mean, we can't, none of us can always do it, but just by being good, you know, being good people. Um, because I think that warms people's hearts, you know, by, by just encountering, just by being who you are. You know, I was touched initially by the warmth and hospitality of Muslims, you know, Muslims extending themselves, you know. That, that is what, what opened my heart, um, you know, to the culture and religion of Islam. So I think building friendships and making personal relationships is one really good thing. And otherwise, yeah, by organizing uh, events like these, talks, perhaps art exhibitions, invite people home, you know, you cook much better than most English people. Uh, so perhaps share some, uh, you know, daisy food and, uh, you know, love goes through the stomach, they say. <laughs> um, yeah, just, just by mixing and mingling and building relationships, I think that's very important. In Islam, uh, we have um, the best position, you know, we have a position of dignity, of strength, we are um, uh, praised and respected for our character, for our piety, you know, for our um, personality and not just for our looks or our sexual allure, you know, or um, our way of flirting, which is often, you know, how we are um, respected in, in, in uh, the secular society. However, um, you know, so in theory it's all wonderful, um, uh, you know, what Islam, the status Islam gives a woman, it encourages education, it encourages, you know, making contribution to society, 
yet you don't have to I mean as a wife and mother you don't even have to clean in Islam you know or, or look after the household um, it's of course most people do but it's not our obligation I mean looking after the children is our obligation but education is also important and once the children are old enough you know we were encouraged to make a contribution to society we should not be just locked up at home and, and, and being the queen of the home and that's about it um, however in, in reality um, you know, often Muslim men perhaps don't quite give Muslim women um, the position or, you know, the rights that we are actually given in Islam. And I've often noticed there is a discrepancy between Islam and Muslims. Uh, it's not visa only vis-a-vis -vis women uh, issues, you know, it's um, in, in terms of in many um, uh, relations really and many, many issues you see this. So um, I think we all need um, to educate ourselves um, about how the Prophet, peace be upon him, treated the women around him, his wives, you know, the position he gave his wives. And in fact, I think it was in his farewell sermon that he continued to emphasize, please take care of your prayers and take care of your women. You know, it's uh, very, very important. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he loved women. And he was very, very good to women. And I wished, um, you know, that all men follow his example, also in the way he treated women. After all, he said, the best among you is the one who is best to your wives. Uh, wives, And I'm the one who is best to my wives. You know, we just uh, must uh, educate our men to, uh, to remember this and practice it. It was a great campaign about two years ago where we had posters of, um, featuring different slogans of the teachings of our noble prophet, peace be upon him, um, you know, in, uh, on bus shelters, in taxis and uh, on tubes, in, in the tube. And, um, you know, my slogan was, I believe in protecting the environment. So did Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, some other lady uh, said, I believe in social justice. So did Muhammad, and um, I think a gentleman said, oh, uh, I believe in women's rights, something like that, you know. So it was these three, uh, women's rights, environment, and um, coexistence, and social justice. And, you know, it was very well received. We did a lot of interviews. At, um, I went on the BBC, Question Time, and, you know, spoke to The Independent, and we did interviews all around the world. In fact, it went viral bef just before it even uh, was posted up in, in the streets of London. And, you know, I, I got um, approached by Indonesia, by Dubai, by Germany. They all wanted this campaign. So it really caused um, a lot of um, talk. And, you know, a lot of people came up to me, David Putnam, Lord David Putnam or whatever. But a lot of people said, yeah, I saw you in the tube. I heard you on the radio and so on, you know. So, uh, I mean, I wished we could keep it up. I really, I just, in fact, wrote to the organizer, who is also the co-publisher of my book, um, because you know, uh, that we, we should keep it up again because it just got, it was a fresh approach mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to showing the teachings of, um, of our faith uh, in, a, in a contemporary way. And, you know, the same reason was really why I wrote my book, um, From MTV to Mecca, because I wanted to um, dissolve the misconceptions mm -hmm. about Islam. You know, I wanted to show the beauty of Islam and its different aspects, you know, in terms of art, culture, spiritual journey, you know, what it gives me, and also to show how I, um, as a modern, um, you know, woman at the forefront of the entertainment business, so I had this dream life, actually found my happiness, not there, but um, as a practicing Muslim. So if, if you know, if, if, if that is so, it must mean something. I mean, I wasn't forced to become a Muslim, I didn't do it for marriage, you know, it, uh, there must be something to it, if, you know, if, if it appeals to me. So. Yeah, so I wrote, it, I wrote my book for these reasons, to inspire others to even just to find their own spiritual path because that is a side of life that is often very neglected in, in our secular society, yet we, we all have a soul and, uh, and you know, we need, we need to nurture it. So I hope um, it, um, you know, it dispels some um, misconceptions and um, maybe it's also support for, for, for new Muslims, you know, uh, inshallah. And I think also some, uh, I mean a lot of Muslims in fact seem to like it too, inshallah.
So may God accept. It's just a humble attempt, you know. And now I um, speak about, you know, it gives me an opportunity to speak about Islam also in the media. You know, I got a lot of interviews. So again, that's a form of da'wah, I, I suppose, you know. Any interview, um, I usually say yes to because it's just an opportunity to get a little bit of the truth in that is normally not um, featured. And I must tell you, um, it was a very difficult birth. I tried to find a publisher for this book for two years. No one wanted to publish a positive story of Islam. And there you see it again. You know, there really is a resistance. People, you know, just generally, they want to keep their stereotypes. Good news don't sell. It's bad news. So if this book was about how I was a Muslim, I got abused by my husband and became an atheist, I probably would have had a publisher immediately. I would have, you know, been a bestseller. But uh, to write a positive story about Islam, someone leaving that hedonistic lifestyle and uh, becoming a practicing Muslim, you know, it, took, it, it really was a challenge to have it published. But God is great and it, it got out in the end. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us. We hope to hear a lot more about your journey to Islam. It's a pleasure. And thank have a read of the book as well. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.